kleine Auszeichnung. Greetings and welcome to the Ayurveda Report. I'm Kai Lass. Today's show we have Light Miller. She's a 35-year experienced practitioner of Ayurveda, internationally renowned author, healer, and teacher. And she's also my teacher, my guru. And she's like a second mom to me. Well, I'm really honored to be able to share her spirit with you today because she's going to address issues that are very important in Ayurveda, such as the encroachment of commercialism in Ayurveda and how Ayurvedic education is being dealt with today and does it really capture the essence of the ancient teachings and what are those essential messages of the ancient teachings. So it's going to be a fascinating interview for you guys. I really, really am honored that you're watching and I'm glad to be able to share my guru with you. Commercialism tends to distort the original message of whatever it be. So uh, we've noticed that in Ayurveda too, that right now there's mm -hmm. a lot of commercial messages around Ayurveda. Mm -hmm. What are some of the things that you see about that? Well, I see people um, going to a spa and they call Ayurveda when the practitioners don't even know what Ayurveda is. That's one of the things I experience. Um, I see people, you know, buying herbs that they don't know what even they're for, you know. Uh, I always have the patient bring me, or the clients bring me a bag of what they're taking. Right. And I say, what are you taking that? Consultation. And your consult always have to bring me whether you're taking allopathic medicine, or whether you're taking herbs, bring them all. And I said, I don't know, I just went at the health food store. Mm -hmm. You know, so a lot of people are buying stuff that they don't even need. Mm -hmm. I mean, and you know, I try not to discourage them because sure. they bought it, and, and there I'm very may careful. be some health benefits, some to, health all benefits things, to all those so. things. But people are just buying mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. just to buy. Sometimes I'm amazed. I said, "Do you take all that?" You know, and they say, "Yes, I do." Mm -hmm. And they said, "Do you know about this herb?" You know, and a lot of the times, they don't even know why they're taking it. And sometimes it's like. Yeah, I took that one for a little while, and then I switched to this one, and then now I have a whole cupboard, cupboard full. full of them, and yeah. you can't get any results if you're yeah. not doing your practice yeah. about yeah, it. Yeah, doing your practice. So it, a lot of it is educating the public. Mm -hmm. um, I think capitalism takes it has a place. Mm -hmm. I don't know if you read that book by the people from Whole Foods, but I think mm -hmm. there's a place as we all need money. Mm -hmm. But to what degree do we sacrifice ourselves? to buy more, mm -hmm. you know, and... Uh, and in terms of Ayurveda, um, the thing that I'm thinking about is that uh, Ayurveda is being sold to this group of, you know, this new consumer of Ayurveda. Mm -hmm. uh, in a sense, it's, it's, it's offering hope, but in a sense, it's also playing on their suffering and their pain. Yeah. And the question for me is, does it really, do all these commercial things really represent the heart of Ayurveda, or are they? No, it doesn't. No, it doesn't, because Ayurveda is by living the science. Ayurveda is by watching your thoughts. Ayurveda is about connecting with your spirit. Ayurveda is about rituals, daily rituals that you do for yourself. Ayurveda is about uh, making a meal with your family, you know. One of my greatest memories with the boys is that I work, I was a working mother, and there was always kitchen in my house when you came in after three o'clock, you know. And at night, I will have them chop their vegetables. It was a family thing we did. We all worked together after they did their homework. We worked together in getting kitchen. Uh -huh. So there was food at the table when they came from school. Mm -hmm. You know, so I think there's so many basic things that people can learn by having the right practitioner. Mm -hmm. uh, we have um, that instant kitchen now. Mm -hmm. You put hot water to it. I mean... I mean, that loses just, the essence yeah, right, of, right. of what Ayurveda and really you, is. You kind of pioneered the use of the crock pot, right, for preparing, yeah, making I, I sure Yeah, I think, you know. yeah, because you have food when you get home. Mm -hmm. You know, you have a doll when you get home. Mm -hmm. uh, if a mother is not home and she's working and she picks up the kids at 3, 4 o'clock, it could be made mm -hmm. that morning or the, uh, the night before, even though Ayurveda doesn't believe in leftover foods. Sometimes our society is geared to that. So I think I'm also big on sauces. Mm -hmm. If you look at my book, at my cookbook, 
You so saw we have 40 different sauces. We have turmeric sauces, we have cashew sauces, we have almond sauces. How simple it is to give your kids, and kids love dipping. Mm -hmm. I don't know a kid that doesn't love to dip. Mm -hmm. And uh, I have, I'm sure they're out there, but I haven't met them. Right, there's two. And, uh, yeah. <laughs> And they, all you have to do is steam some vegetables, mm -hmm. do a well-spiced Ayurvedic sauce, mm -hmm. like a sag, and put it over the food, and they love it, you know. Right. So I think that my, my calling is to really make mothers aware, again, of simple foods that they can make. Because mm -hmm. everybody's working, everybody's busy, everybody's... With, uh, with uh, the subject of money, um, you know, one of the things that's happening now is that uh, schools are marketing to people saying, you know, you can have a career in Ayurveda. And uh, it, it almost makes it, it, it almost presents it that uh, there's going to be some kind of a lucrative opportunity to study Ayurveda. When well, you know, Ayurveda is trying, it's number eight in the country as a profession right now. I don't really? know if you realize that if you go into the internet, it's one of the most growing, fastest growing professions. It's number eight. I have uh, through the massage schools, a lot of massage, some more mm -hmm. massage therapists are coming in. A lot of people, I know, of course, with Deepak Chopra's popularity is helping tremendously. And um, I just hope that the schools integrate a lot of what we're talking about, uh, making the ghee. The I mean, the kids love make, making ghee. But in terms of the motivation uh, for practicing Ayurveda, um, you know, just in my own uh, experience, thinking of it as a career, mm -hmm. um, that's like a little bit separate from the primal motivation. And I was thinking in terms of commercialism, you know, commercialism is, uh, in a sense, representing the message about Ayurveda in a certain way. Mm -hmm. uh, so to paint Ayurveda as you're going to do Ayurveda because it's a career uh, is, in my my thinking to be different than you're going to do Ayurveda because you're moved by compassion, you're moved up from the heart. Yeah, well, I think that regardless of what school you go to, there's a shift that takes place okay. in people, and they start searching. Mm -hmm. They really, mm -hmm. and uh, it's in their heart. It's, it's a seed. It's like I what see. we're talking about. It's a seed sometimes, and I think that money can be made. There's nothing wrong with making money. Uh, I think I'm hoping that the schools really integrate. My only prayers are that the school integrate some of the stuff we're talking about in this interview, these reports of Ayurveda, that people begin to remember its roots, where mm -hmm. it came from, the simplicity of it. Um, that's all I can say, and, and it's going to be how it's going to be, and all we can do is reach, you know, I believe uh, that I transform people one person at a time. Mm -hmm. And, for example, I could do eight panchakarmas like I used to and I narrow it down to no more than two uh, a week. So, you know, uh, I think that people get the essence of Ayurveda, you can do more, we can create more transformation in people's life. Mm -hmm. And it's a, it's a process and uh, the fact that it's getting popularized and schools are, I just hope that the schools are in integrity. Mm -hmm. You know, I mean, right. I just hope that each state has some kind of and that's what I'm doing with my state, some kind of guidelines of what Ayurveda is, really is. Mm -hmm. And like I said before, in my state, we cannot call it a medicine, and we will never pass mm -hmm. as a system. I want to call it a lifestyle coaching, lifestyle supporting people into counseling each other, you know, and uh, bringing harmony into people's life. Mm -hmm. You know, one of we're thinking of slogans that we can use, bringing harmony in people's life. Mm -hmm. So when you begin on bliss, because everybody wants to be happy, whether they know it or not, they want to be happy. And Ayurveda has those keys, those little turnarounds that right. can take you away from that fast, active pace mm -hmm. that we get into mm -hmm. to a simpler, simple, simple life. And I was saying, these people are searching. It is a great time. So. I, do, I cannot answer what the schools will do. Um, it is number eight in the country hmm. as a growing profession. And whether it's good or bad, at this point, I don't know. I think it depends on the school. Mm -hmm. It depends on the training. Uh, it depends on the integrity of the teachers mm -hmm. and what they're after. And that's an individual karma. Right. I think right. if you bring Ayurveda, and this is from my heart, 
if you bring your Ayurveda, which is that's going to make money, the school is going to make more and more money and more money, people are going to get turned off. Mm -hmm. You know, I know of schools that people go to McDonald's for lunch, you know, and to me it's like right. mind blowing the ancient names. I go into houses of teachers that are have school and have no place to judge because everybody's where they are and there's not even a spice in that house. And these are people that are own schools. So yes, it's becoming extremely commercialized and if you're looking at Ayurveda as a profession, which I definitely think it's wonderful because you're reaching out, you're counseling people into a better form of thinking, a better form of living, uh, you should check your schools before you actually just blindly enroll. Uh, you should get to know your teachers, you should get to know uh, their mm -hmm. backgrounds, because, you know, many schools are just pushing pills. Mm -hmm. Take another pill, you know, and I don't practice that way, and I know, as you know, being one of my graduates, that I don't encourage that. I mean, sometimes, somebody has high blood pressure, you need something to if you especially if they want to get off medication, you mm -hmm. know, uh, and they cut themselves out of medication, they have to have something because right, right. diet is going to take a little more paying attention, and at that point you got to get that blood pressure down. But uh, before you, it's not easy for an American to integrate diet as quickly as some right. conscious person or yogi, somebody that's already living a yoga lifestyle, a vegetarian lifestyle. It's it's hard for people. Because they use the junk food and they're fixed, you know. Mm. What about uh, what about fads, diet fads? You've seen all of it, from the wheatgrass to the vegans to the raw the to, to the, the raw. Ayurvedic and. I think again integration. I think that everybody, everything has a place. And as you find Ayurveda, you know that for the Vata person, eating raw foods is the worst thing that can happen. And it's another commercialism. Raw foods is the biggest commercialism. People creating blenders that right. create certain things. and uh, But I think people who really see what Ayurveda is will discover it for themselves. And uh, I think people, those who are open, mm -hmm. will get it. Mm -hmm. And those who don't, it's like everything else, you know. I, don't th I think Ayurveda is here to stay. Mm -hmm. I see it as a possibility of, uh, of a national medicine, mm -hmm. holistic medicine that people will get paid eventually with. Mm -hmm. um, I don't know if I get to live it, you know, because of my age, but I think that uh, it will happen eventually. Mm -hmm. And I don't think you can do Ayurveda and not wake up. Right, right. Eventually it, it opens the heart it opens and up. the mind it opens and up consciousness. Because the books are there, and whether the, the schools are good or not, right. the, the, and I'm trying to crank more practitioners as the machine graduate, we graduated 40 these, this <laughs> yeah. semester. Yeah. I think people will get that there's more to Ayurveda than that. Mm -hmm. And I see that happening. Like I was talking about one particular person. She went to school. She went to a very fast learning school. Mm -hmm. She graduated. She knew nothing. She found John Dulliard to study. Then she moved to Florida. She found me. And the funny situation with her, her biggest calling, because she felt that she can practice, she became a psychotherapist. And now she's oh. integrating. Wow. She just finished her internship with psychotherapy. Ayurveda into her psychotherapy practice, which is all about coaching Fantastic. people to let go and heal from inside out, you know. So, because if you have so much trauma in your life and working with grief, she specializes on grief. Well, we're talking about uh, toxic emotions. Toxic you know, emotions, Got to detox those toxic and emotions. Got to detox those toxic emotions. So, I think that if someone is really, I don't think we're going to dilute it as much as people think. Because it's, it's a spiritual medicine. Mm -hmm. And if you read any of the books and you study any of the books, it is the root of all medicines, including allopathic medicine, as you know. Right. So therefore, as people get that, something is going to sparkle in them. And there's also the law of karma. If we practice it from greed, eventually mm -hmm. we'll fall down. Whether... Uh, Conscious capitalism exists or not, uh, as it's been written in many of the the newest book from Whole Foods is conscious capitalism. Right. I think anything we enter with consciousness, uh, we can create a change. Right. And like I said, sometimes I see people lost in Whole Foods. They don't know what they're doing. They don't even know why they're there, but they begin to spark a little light, a little that there's uh -huh. another way of doing things and. 
I know a lot of people talk about, well, they promote GMOs, and you don't know whether they're for the GMOs. It's the beginning stage. It's just right. like taking baby steps. The baby right. doesn't, without crawling, the baby doesn't walk. And actually, it's no good for the baby not to crawl. So people mm-hmm. are crawling right. into the into the health food stores, finding alternatives, and eventually that will take into something else. Right. So right. this commercialism eventually will create some some awakening. Right. Probably not as much as you and I would like to see it, but it's the beginning process of finding somebody like you and I, somebody that's practicing from the heart, somebody that's practicing with basic Ayurveda, you know, and that's... And I think eventually through the organizations that are being birthed, we'll have some form of standard uh, teachings. It's going to happen. Mm-hmm. It's, eventually, it, yeah. Eventually it's going to happen because you cannot get away from the roots mm-hmm. in Ayurveda. I mean, it's, it's basic, it's simple, right, it's right. not complicated. Um, so again, as people begin, I mean, it's nothing like putting herbs in your body. It's going to create a change in yep, you. Yeah, can feel you it. Know, I get a lot of patients with depression and have them inhale the oils, mm-hmm. and immediately changes begin to happen mm-hmm. because it touches that limbic system. It awakens that part of us that is so... Um, asleep, mm-hmm. a so right. condition. Right. Yep. So it, so it begins to awaken, you know. Oh, you put somebody on a steam. Like I always encourage people when they do a massage to do a steam, mm-hmm. and they experience the detoxification. And you know, we practice with trifula internally. Yeah, trifula through the mouth is great, but when you begin to put it on a basti, it creates awakening. Wow. You know, so. I think that it's slowly people like you and I and a lot of the practitioners that I train will leave that integrity. Uh, it's a matter of time, mm-hmm. and I trust the process, because we work in our karma. Yeah. Uh, we talked about why do we come here, we come here to master ourselves, mm-hmm. and in order to have mastery, you have to have obstacles. Mm-hmm. You know, uh, we, you've been with many teachers, Guru Fire, they put you through the... Right. Through the through Every teacher puts you through the test to see are you really serious about going to another level. Mm -hmm. And uh, that's the essence of awakening, Mm -hmm. that you have to be tested Mm -hmm. to see whether you pass the test Mm -hmm. or not. That's interesting because in the context of education, uh, where tests are written beforehand and they're applied to a whole class, the real question then is, is that test going to actually put that student to the test? Right? So mm-hmm. if you have a guru or if you have your Ayurveda guru who can mm-hmm. really put you personally through the tests, mm-hmm. then mm-hmm. you're going to emerge holding on to the holding flame. Holding on to the flame, yeah. Yeah, yeah I, uh, I do a review with the students always before they take a test because it's required by the standards of Nama. I, I'm a Nama Pro school. And uh, so I always test them and I always remind them to come from the heart. Uh-huh. In every series, it's just when you do answering the questions, just remember that the, the information oh, is right. within you. So don't do it from your head, do right, it from your heart. Right. And it's amazing, you know, everybody passes the test. Even the most people that feel that they're stuck, they pass it. We do a review, and my main review is remember who they are. Remember who you are. Right. Remember the information is within you. You have heard over and over and over, and, you know, it's part of it. Because I have to have... You know, I'm caught in, in the two worlds. I love to do a Guru Corps program where people come and just experience the garden and experience me working. And I have to, I, I have to have, in order for people to come to me, we have to have a, a Nama approved school, mm-hmm, you know. Mm-hmm. So we have, we always have that mm-hmm. to walk both paths and, uh, you know, you ha- it's part of life. Right. It's like we have to have a job to be able to, we know that spirit provides, but if we don't have a job, right. we can't make money, you know, and you know, you've been there. Providing you know, is slow. <laughs> providing sometimes is slow because, you know, yeah. you, you're learning your lessons, you're learning mm-hmm. how to, yeah. And it's a constant looking inside, mm-hmm. constant looking inside, constant a vigilance, I call it vigilance, I, mm-hmm. it's a word I use a lot in class. Mm-hmm. In order to be a good practitioner, you have to live in vigilance about your right. own life. Right. Yeah. Because healing begins with you. Yeah. And from there you can heal your family, from there you can heal your clients, your community, yeah. and from there you can step out into the world. But first you have to heal yourself. And uh, 
it's it's just a constant vigilance. I for me, I I tell you on a daily basis. I this morning my son invited me to go to the gym, and for me taking a bath, an essential bath, oily my body was more important than going to the gym. You know, so just taking time for you again. Uh, it's anything I say is take time. Take even if 15 minutes to do an abhyanga, even if it's you know, people say, well, you don't understand. I live in such, I work in a, such a busy office. Hide in the toilet and close your eyes and right. do some breathing, you know. Right. Go to the smelliest place and do some pranayama. They'll leave step you alone out. in the bathroom. They'll leave you alone right. in the bathroom. Nobody's going to come there, you know. Right. Or uh, step out. Yeah. Tell me to take a walk and right. just close your eyes someplace. Uh, there's ways to balance this mm. crazy, this hectic life. There's ways to... Uh, sometimes in the plane, I just close my eyes and I shut everything down. You know, it's, it's, mm -hmm. you know, you try to travel a lot, so I spend a lot of time in planes. In this week alone, I went from Trinidad to Puerto Rico to LA, and I just close my eyes and you know, I just shut the world down. And that's the gift that meditation is. Mm -hmm. We can sh once you learn to meditate, you can shut the world any place you are. Right. Right. For more content on Ayurveda, healing, yoga, and Vedanta, follow Kailas. If you need an Ayurvedic consultation, I am available internationally over Skype and Google Plus, and you can get more information about how to get an Ayurvedic consultation by clicking here. And if you're in Los Angeles, schedule an appointment. And remember, I'm available for workshops, presentations, and consultations in your city. I look forward to hearing from you, and I welcome you to my practice, so take these blessings for your journey. Ashurvad. Namaste.